It's time for Health Check with Heidi Gottman, a daily dose of health and wellness information. Call or text Heidi your questions at 373-1220. That's 373-1220. And now here's Heidi Gottman. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Health Check. I'm Heidi Godman. Hope you're doing well on this glorious day. Uh, We have a great show in store for you. I'm very excited about it. In a little bit, we are going to be talking to my great friend, Dr. Dean Sutherland, for our weekly brain boost. And in today's segment, our weekly brain boost, we're going to be talking about the risk of dehydration, not just throughout your whole life, but especially in your older years, because for older adults, dehydration can lead to terrible kidney damage, which could leave you disabled, it could leave you on dis- dialysis, and, and also in some cases it can be deadly, and it doesn't take too much for a senior to become dehydrated. So what are the symptoms and how do you diagnose it? What's the treatment? Can you come back from it? But especially, how do you avoid it to begin with? We're going to be talking to Dean about that. Just happened to a dear family member of mine. So this is on my mind right now. I want to talk about that. Something else on my mind is the holidays. Hope you're having a good time right now during your holidays. And uh, what are you getting your special someone? It, ha- it turns out that quite a few people are happy to give away beauty gifts. So we want to talk about some of the different beauty trends going on now. Can you actually get your, your special someone the gift of beauty with a doctor? Can you go to a dermatologist's office and, and purchase something that you give to someone else? The answer is yes, you can. But how do you do that? What's involved? What are some good ideas? We're going to be speaking with a dermatologist to find out. We are also going to be talking to her about beach body readiness. And this is the kind that does not involve diet or exercise. We're really talking about skin. And then we're also going to be talking about what to look for in a good sunscreen, which also might be a good holiday gift idea, just saying. Anyway, to find out more on this, we are going to be speaking to my good friend, Dr. Manjula Jegasothi, who is the founder of the Miami Skin Institute. Hey, Manjula. Hi, Heidi. Thanks again for having me on your show. Glad that you're with us, and you always give us some great advice. And for everybody who's listening, maybe if they haven't heard you before, tell us again a little bit about your background, Manjula. Sure. Um, I'm a board-certified dermatologist who has now practiced exclusively aesthetic dermatology for the last 10 years or so. Um, I'm located in uh, Coral Gables, Florida, and uh, I take care of all kinds of people with different uh, skin issues, and I try to bring to our radio show the most frequent questions I've been getting in the week or so <laughs> before the show. Yeah, and it's it's always so much fun to talk to you. You, you really are, are treating a wide variety of patients. And so I like hearing about all the different things that you're doing and and you really do so much. So let's talk about the holidays because so many different ideas out there. And I think sometimes if we are wondering what could we get a special person in our life, a good friend, a sister, a mother, a girlfriend, whoever it would be in your life, you have an idea that would be good, but you don't know where to begin. So let me ask you this. Is it common for people to come to your office and purchase gifts for other people? Extremely common, especially at this time of year, but even um, in wedding season and for birthdays. I think it's interesting, you know, we always say that it's the thought that counts and the best gifts are from the heart. So I find it interesting that patients of mine who really think that their work looks good, that they love their chemical peels or they love getting their Botox, uh, you know, give a gift uh, certificate to my office uh, in the amount they think will be, you know, we'll discuss it together that would be appropriate for their loved one to get a treatment. And that's kind of their kind way of saying, you know, I love doing this and I think you could benefit from it too and I would love to see you doing this. And believe it or not, I see wives doing it for their husbands just as much as sisters, mothers, daughters. <laughs> really? That is great. Mm-hmm. I, I think more power to everybody for, for doing that. And it can be something that's just to make you feel better about yourself. I mean, it's not just about looks. It's really about self-esteem at the bottom of it all. Don't you agree? Absolutely. I like to think of my office as sort of a happy place for my patients, and a lot of them see it the same way, too. So they tell me that's why they buy the gift certificate for their loved one, because they want them to be happy in the same way. Somehow, uh, I think looking good is tied into feeling better a lot of times. So 
So that's what I like to do. I agree. Okay, so a chemical peel is a good idea. And can you give us an idea of a range for that? If someone in, in Florida is listening and wants to go into his or her local dermatologist's office, what can you expect to pay for that? Sure, and I just wanted to say also, most modern dermatology offices definitely provide gift certificates or gift cards hmm. uh, these days, and anybody would be happy to counsel someone who's new to it as to what dollar amount or whatever, but the price range in general is between $80 and $140, so it's a nice place to start, and light uh, fruit acid peels are suitable for all skin types. They can be tailored appropriately, but I do recommend it be done at the doctor's office so that there's no um, bad side effects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You want an expert who's taking care of that. All right. So a chemical peel might be one thing. Something else you would absolutely want to go only to a dermatologist for or a plastic surgeon would be Botox. Tell us about that. Correct. Correct. And, you know, a lot of my patients have sort of gotten used to how they look good or their looks are enhanced because of the particular Botox treatment they get with me. And so, as we know, aging, uh, the, the actual specific signs of aging are very genetic. And so family members, they see their, their daughters or their mothers with the same issues that they have and see that there's a nice, easy fix for it and love to give them Botox treatment for that. Someone who's a little hesitant to come in is much more likely to come in with this kind of gift certificate. All right, terrific. Now, if if you're not really looking for something in a doctor's office, what about just going to a department store cosmetic counter or to even a drug store, especially if people have smaller budgets? What can you tell us there if, if someone is looking to give a, a healthy gift of beauty? Absolutely. Um, for the department store crowd, you know, this is the time when there's so many specials going on in all the department stores. When you buy something, you can get a beauty set or something like that. And I find that a lot of daughters are giving their moms new new eyeshadow kits or new um, lip pencils, colors, or glosses because a lot of us tend to get stuck in a certain decade of when we thought our makeup was the <laughs> best and don't update after. To that and so sometimes it is up to our loved ones to give us a little nudge to update and and it's 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 all that out of love and I think it so it should therefore be uh, accepted as such and and maybe take the hint <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and that's good and we can all we can always learn new things so new eye color new lip color now what about mascara what are the health rules regarding that yes um, I think it uh, mascara in particular is something people don't realize. Um, it can harbor uh, different viruses that, that can then give you, for example, conjunctivitis or pink eye um, or even just superficial skin infections in the eyelid area or what we commonly know as dyes, which is kind of an infected blocked tear duct. So that's why really we tell people to remove their mascara for sure every single night before they go to bed to reduce the incidence of that. But then also mascara can get uh, infected with any of these things. Uh, So we recommend that you change out your mascara, meaning throw it away and buy a new one every two or three months. So it really is a very good gift idea because those, even those drugstore mascaras can run about 10 to $15 each. Mm-hmm. All right. So really it's two or three months. I thought it was every six months, but that's not, that's yes. not safe enough. The old thinking used to be every six months, but I'm seeing a lot of people who get styes after two or three months of the same mascara. Again, I think it depends on your on your anatomy and stuff, but certainly in South Florida, we tend to secrete more um, sweat and tears and that kind of thing, you know, when we're outside a lot. And so, therefore, I think it's smarter in this kind of environment to change your mascara more frequently. Okay. And certainly, if you have any kind of eye infection that you develop, you would never want to use that same mascara again. Even if the mascara didn't cause it, you don't want to use it again. Absolutely, because you actually infect the mascara yourself. So if you've had any conjunctivitis or any kind of sty, 
this is a lot of people don't realize you need to throw out both your mascara and your eyeliner that you if you've used it when you were having the problem mm-hmm. obviously if it's something you haven't used in in weeks before you had the problem then you can it's not infected mm-hmm. okay and then what about foundation because i mean how long does foundation last you know we all sort of have two different colors a little darker in the summer for some people with light skin or lighter in the winter that's me and then i have some other <laughs> friends who who are lucky enough to have one color the whole year through uh, some people with darker complexions the same thing but but what about as far as how long you can hold on to that and can you give that to someone as a gift i think that's a little bit difficult to gift because Finding the right color honestly takes, I think, trial and error and trying it on in different lights, so it would not be a surprise. However, if you were giving someone a gift that's not a surprise, it's an excellent gift. Um, I think that they do need to be changed also just because we have bacteria that normally lives on our skin, staph bacteria in particular, and it can collect in the in any um, foundation formulation, whether it's a solid or liquid. Um, so I recommend foundation being changed out every six months, as we previously used to say about mascara. Um, if you have um, a skin type that carries a lot of bacteria, meaning acneic or rosacea skin, I would recommend and you change your foundation more frequently than that. Okay, and then how about brushes? That would be a fantastic gift to give someone a nice new set of brushes or even just one gigantic loose powder brush or something because they are Absolutely. very expensive. But what about how often you need to clean them and all that? Yes. Um, believe it or not, the recommendations for cleaning brushes is monthly, which I think no one does. I wish I don't do that enough. Um, but um, one nice way to do it, I'm finding, is to use um, dry shampoo at least. So it's not as much hassle and it doesn't have to dry. So maybe you could use dry shampoo on your brushes every month or so without wetting them, and then you should do a real wash where you wet them and use detergent um, hopefully every three months. And is that enough to kill the bacteria in the brushes? And and how often do you see women who come in with bumps or rashes on the skin from brushes? Um, It's so hard to tease out whether it's the brush or a new foundation or something they tried in the department store when they were running through or something. So I'm not sure what the incidence of makeup-related rashes related to brushes, how it breaks down. But definitely brushes are a source. I mean, I I think the studies that have been done are where they go around and culture people's brushes, and they find that there's a very high bacterial rate in most people's brushes. Yeah, that was a story we always did in the news. We would go around and swab everything, and I think the scariest of all was the dressing room and all the makeup. Okay, we we are going to keep take a Quick break, but keep on talking to Dr. Manjula Jagasothi, who is the founder of the Miami Skin Institute. She's an aesthetic dermatologist. And we are going to come back and talk about how to get ready for your beach body without dieting or exercise. What are we talking about? Your skin, of course. This is Health Check with Heidi Godman on WSRQ. Stay with us. Welcome back to Health Check. I'm Heidi Godman. If you're just joining us, my guest today is Dr. Manjula Jagasothi. She is an aesthetic dermatologist and founder of Miami Skin Institute. And today we are talking about gifts of beauty. We were talking before about, oh, you can go to a dermatologist's office and you can buy a gift for someone you love this holiday season, a gift card, a, a gift certificate, and you might want to get someone a chemical peel or Botox or, or any amount of money that might be targeted for a particular treatment. And Manjula was also talking about what you can do, go into a department store, drug store even, and, and get different gifts of beauty and t- giving us some advice about the health and safety of those, especially if you want beautiful skin. But you might also want to give yourself a gift and invest in yourself. And so maybe you have seen different ads and things for these lasers that can just melt fat away. So, so Manjula and I were then talking about, well, hmm, you know, January's coming up and it's, if you're going away for the holidays or you're just going to your own beach for the holidays, do you want to get that great beach body? What can you do? So we are going to be talking about these lasers and it's not just for anyone. It's not if you have a weight problem. It's really, we're more talking about people who just need a little bit of 
tightening up of, of some loose skin, but I'm going to let Manjula explain because she is the expert. So Manjula, we're talking about lasers, but not thermal lasers, right? Well, all lasers are thermal in the sense that they convert light energy to heat. Um, But now the newest generation of lasers, and I'm talking literally, they've been fine-tuned and gotten much better in the last year. 2015, I'd say, was the year of the skin-tightening laser. Um, So I wanted to make our December segment about um, the people who are in good shape, who exercise and eat right, um, but are, you know, going to be coming down to Florida for the for the holiday season or just for a couple of weeks or, or, or have time off. We live here, but we don't get to go to the beach as often as, as we'd like to because we're working. Um, what can we do for a quick fix to look great in our bikinis without, um, you know, breaking the bank and, having, and being able to not get the results fairly quickly? So the two main things that are new are using Altera or ultrasound laser on the body. Okay, and that so, can be great for lifting the thighs, buttocks, and arms. All right, so this is an ultrasound laser. Yes, it's the Altera ultrasound laser. Um, there's lots of ultrasound lasers out there, but Altera is a brand, and it's considered the current gold standard. Okay, but it sounds like two different things. Sounds like ultrasound, and it sounds like laser. Those sound like two different things combined in one. How does that work? Because I haven't heard about it. Oh, okay. So uh, basically, it's a highly focused ultrasound beam. It's the same technology, meaning it's the same wavelength as ultrasound, such as when you get a sonogram when you're pregnant, etc. However, it's focused into a um, five millimeter spot size beam, so it's much. Oh, I, it goes I see what you're saying. And uh, it's a higher energy. Okay. I, all right. Yes, I have heard about ultrasounds, high frequency ultrasounds, but I see you're saying using it as a laser, using the high frequency ultrasound. Ultrasound. Yes. It becomes the laser. Okay, terrific. All it right. So, how do you then use high frequency ultrasound to lift sagging thighs or arms or a sagging rear end? How do you do that? Okay, so the same in the same principles that you might have heard to lift, for example, a sagging neck or cheeks that we typically use out there for. Lately, um, a lot of uh, sort of forward-thinking doctors have said, "Why don't we use that same technology to lift soft tissue?" And again, this is in people who are within ten to fifteen percent of their medically ideal body weight, so they're not heavy. They don't have a lot of soft tissue, but the gravity over the course of forty, fifty years makes it sag. So for those people, something like an ultrasound lifting is great. You'll see results very quickly within a week or two. And the beam is basically directed uh, onto the skin and a place so that it's, it pushes the tissue upward and then tightens the underlying sub-Q and, t- and even the tendon and muscle fascia to be tighter and, 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 and not sag as much. Hmm. All right. Well, that's very encouraging. How many treatments does it take to do that? Um, you know, you can get about a 30% lift. Again, if you're within that ideal body weight, you'd get about a 30% lifting of any particular body area with one session. Wow. So how many sessions do people typically get? Um, people typically, it depends. A lot of, you know, the, the model crowd or the people who do, um, you know, um, uh, professional athletes, people like that who have to show off a lot of their body. And, you know, they're still in great shape. But like I said, it's just the gravity is, is causing their, their soft tissue to sag a little. They're muscular. Those people may get it done every year or so. But everybody else, the bikini body to look good, I you know, generally Altera's results last about three to four years. Incredible. And what's the price range? Um, so for any given area, meaning the thighs are one area, the buttocks are one area, it's around $4,000. Okay. So it is pricey, but for some people, that is an investment that they want to make. And then another problem that a lot of people have is cellulite. Tell us, what is cellulite? Cellulite is the bane of every a lot of thin people's existence because we work out hard, we eat right, we do what we think is right, and genetically you still have cellulite. Cellulite is... Um, these fibrous bands that sort of um, form between the muscle and the skin, sort of so going upward. They grow upward from the muscle to the skin and sort of separate the fat in, in the area into lobules, giving the skin a sort of dimpled cottage cheese appearance. 
And this is most commonly seen in women. We think there's a hormonal mediation to it, and it's seen most commonly on the back of the upper thighs or the buttocks. All right, so how do you get rid of that? So until now, there were all kinds of skin-firming creams and, and things, and honestly, none of those worked so well simply because they didn't penetrate the skin. So now we have um, radio frequency lasers, which, again, have gotten a lot more effective in the last year or so. Um, some of the common radio frequency lasers that, uh, that a good physicians use are Exilis. It's E-X-I-L-I-S. There's one called Thermitite. There's one called Viora. Um, so those are those are good radio frequency lasers, and what they do is they exert a current very superficially in the skin. Now this is like a radio wave current, so it's also at the long end of the wavelength spectrum. It's the same as radio waves, believe it or not, but it's highly focused into a laser beam. Mm. Um, and and so then that's applied to the skin, and it tightens the superficial skin. And with the cellulite, what it does is it sort of um, tightens the skin all around the dimpling, you know, all along, around the fibrous band to give the skin a smooth appearance. Wonderful. And how much does that go for? So those treatments are in the order of between uh, 400 and $800 a session, and you can, improve, again, expect about a 30% improvement with each session. Those probably have to be repeated more often because the skin, as it gets older, has less memory for building extra, extra collagen and tightening up, so you have to do it a little more frequently. The deeper layers of tissue, which the ultrasound addresses, have more memory, and so the results last longer. Okay, terrific. Well, it's wonderful that we have these incredible options and we want to keep on talking to you but we need to take a quick break for news and weather so everybody stick around more with Dr. Manjula Jagasothi in just a minute this is Health Check with Heidi Godman on WSRQ stay with us Welcome back to Health Check. I'm Heidi Godman. We are talking today with aesthetic dermatologist, Dr. Manjula Jagasothi, and our topic is your skin, of course. And we're talking about how to tighten up some of the areas that you would like to look a little bit better. There are different kinds of lasers out there, and they don't hurt or anything. You don't feel any heat, but they can do quite a bit under the sun, the skin. Some use different high-tech kinds of technology, so high High ultra, uh, high frequency ultrasound is one of them, and, and you know these change all the time. And Manjula was telling us even just last year there was this big turnover in the types of lasers that are out there. So all kinds of things that you can do, and one of them sort of does a, a combination of using a tiny scalpel with a laser. And we're going to talk about that one now. Manjula, what is this one? Selfina. Yes. Um, so this is probably everyone might have seen is kind of creating the latest buzz in the minimally uh, invasive aesthetic market. It's a Selfina laser, and there's an older version called the Cellulase, and both of them use a combination of a uh, little bit of surgery, minor surgery, and with the laser in the same machine. So essentially, the laser beam, the, mach- the handpiece is placed on the skin, and then a little needle comes and cuts the actual fibrous band under the surface of the skin that's causing the dimpling, and then the radio frequency current is applied to the surrounding skin to tighten it. Um, We find that when we do this, it gives a much better result than just radio frequency alone, um, on the order of about a 60% improvement with one session, Um, and it also persists longer on the order of, uh, you know, two years or so, depending on your genetics. Okay, very interesting. And what are the treatments like? Do we know how many it might take or how long they're going to last or how much it might cost? 
Sure. Um, generally, the treatments are anywhere between, depending on how much. So the, these these treatments are administered per dimple, as it were. So if you have a lot of dimpling, then it's going to cost more. So anywhere from between a uh, thousand to two thousand dollars. So they are a little bit more cost effective, for example, than lifting your thighs with Alzera, um, and they are more effective than simple radio frequency alone. It's something to watch out for. I think they're going to be very popular in the in the future because they are a real solution because they get at the root of the problem. They're not just tightening skin, but they're also cutting the fibrous bands that cause the cottage cheese or cellulite appearance. Mm-hmm. But but does radio frequency hurt? You know the the traditional kind of cellulite treatment laser that's being used right now versus not at all not at all it's mildly warm okay um it doesn't really hurt it's it's like a almost like a just too hot compress okay all <laughs> right the best way I can but then it. but then selfina is using uh, a little bit of a scalpel there and i know you said it's yes. as small as a needle but is there any pain with that well, with that, um, the, the, the machine itself actually administers a little bit of um, injected anesthesia with that needle. So there's a little bit of lidocaine put into the surface of the skin. So the only thing you feel is the lidocaine injection. After that, you don't feel anything at all. Um, because, that it, because it's minimally invasive, that laser carries with it about a three- to four-day bruising period afterward. So that's the only caveat. If you're coming down for vacation and want to look good, you can't do those, the, those procedures that we talked about after the break. You'd have to do one of the procedures we talked about before the break. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then what about the price for Selfina? What should we expect as a range? So anywhere between a thousand to two thousand dollars, I would say. Again, it's per dimple. If you only have a couple of dimples on each buttock or something, it would only be probably around a thousand dollars, and it would last a long time. Probably, if you know, if you have very little, your results are going to last longer. And if you're younger, your results are going to last longer. Hmm. All right, but with any of these lasers, are there any complications that we need to talk about? Um, with the radio frequency in Alcera, if it's not done properly, it can burn the skin, um, causing sort of a, a flaking and scaling and even in darker skin types, some hyperpigmentation. Um, I guess the worst part about it is that you can't really get sun if somebody burns your skin with the lasers. So it sort of defeats the purpose of why you got the treatment in the first place because you can't go to the beach in your bikini. Now, with these more invasive laces with the needle and the scalpel, they absolutely need to be done by a board-certified aesthetic physician because they require some finesse. They have to be placed appropriately. The scalpel has to cut the skin at the right place without cutting it too deep or too superficially. And, yes, that if the anesthesia is not applied properly, you can have fluid issues. So... And Some of the minor complications uh, associated with surgery, swelling, bruising, and then, you know, also dehydration and things. So so those definitely carry with them a slightly greater risk than the non-invasive lasers. And who should not even think about getting this kind of a treatment? Who is this not for? I kind of think that anybody who's over 20% over their ideal body weight is A, not going to see any result, and so they're going to feel like they wasted their money, and B, um, with the fluid issues with the cellophena and the cellulase, it can be a little bit tricky because if you put in a lot of fluid and the person gets overloaded with fluid, that can affect their heart. If they're elderly and they have heart problems, they need to make sure that they're cleared by their cardiologist because anything where you inject a lot of fluid into someone can then cause issues with with, heart, with uh, their heart functioning and, and stuff. And so we know people who tend to be overweight have these issues. So I would say definitely check with your primary doctor, cardiologist. I just think that in terms of cellulite, if you're more than 20% overweight, I'm not sure that improving your cellulite is worth it. It would be better for you to go on a good exercise and diet regimen or even undergo liposuction uh, to reduce that extra fat and then consider more of these tweaking procedures. I agree with you. I love that approach too. So, so that is how you can look a little better if you wish when it comes to fat. But, but what about your skin? I mean, everyone wants gorgeous, glowing, healthy skin and everybody also wants to go to the beach So how do you make sure that you can use a good sunscreen to protect your skin that isn't going to be too heavy, too oily, too too greasy? I mean, what should you look for? 
It's funny, I really like what you said at the beginning of our program when you were saying about how sunscreen hint hint is a great idea, is a great gift idea. It really is because um, in terms of silky feel or greasiness or appropriateness for a person's skin type, that's such a lot of trial and error. Everybody is different. Everybody has different smell preferences. Everybody has different, different texture preferences. So I tell my patients, if you found a sunscreen that you really like, whether it's a department store variety or, or drugstore variety, share it. Share it with your friends and family. It's a great stocking stuffer, particularly for people who are traveling. And if you like the smell or texture, chances are your family <laughs> will too because I think those things are genetically mediated. And certainly among friends, I think you tend to like the same kinds of things too. And so that's a good uh, place to start. So in terms of texture and in terms of smell and in terms of tolerability and cosmetic elegance, the drugstore and department store brands are very good. Um, what we have to look for is the ingredients. Um, and now, in fact, most sunscreen ingredients have been standardized also. The FDA has kind of stepped in this last year and made the labeling for sunscreen much more clear. And so it's much easier for us to see that none of them are truly waterproof. You really do have to reapply it after you've been in the water. And if you're sweating, you need to reapply it at least every hour. But it's funny in terms of ingredients, what is old is new. So the two, the two words you have to look for in ingredients are either zinc or titanium. Those are the block, sun blocks that are the most broad spectrum. They cover UVA, UVB, and UVC sun rays. And that's what I would recommend in terms of ingredients. The rest is kind of up to you. Except that you want to make sure it's broad spectrum and you want to make sure if there's... You, if they're zinc and titanium based, they will be broad spectrum. Okay, terrific. So, yes, and that's what the FDA labeling is, is now set to. If they don't have titanium and zinc, then they can't really be called broad spectrum because then they have to have a multiple other ingredients. And some of the older ingredients you might see are avobenzol and parsol, 1789. They're complicated. And so, in my opinion, I tell my patients, Look for micronized zinc or titanium. And micronized simply means that the particles are made so small that the white appearance doesn't show on your skin. Okay. Fantastic advice. And I want to thank you so much, aesthetic dermatologist Dr. Manjula Jagosothi. If we want to find out more about you, I know you are so media savvy. Tell us about the many <laughs> ways we can find out what you're doing. Sure. I'd love for you guys to check out my blog on WordPress. Uh, search Miami Skin Institute at WordPress.com. Um, you can also check out my blogs, which are easily found when you um, Google my name, Dr. Manjula Jagasodhi, uh, at, and it comes up on Google+. Plus. And then, of course, my website, which is MiamiSkinInstitute.com. And then my latest edition, which I love to talk about, is my podcast channel, which features all of my radio talk shows with Heidi. Uh, so you can listen to both of us uh, on the comfort of your commute or while you're exercising. And for that, you'd go to Podomatic.com and search Miami Skin Institute. Fantastic. All right. Great talking to you as always. Hope you have a wonderful holiday, Manjula. Thank you so much. You too, Heidi. Thank you. Happy New Year. You too. All right. Dr. Manjula Jagasothi, check her out, MiamiSkinInstitute.com. We are going to take a quick break. When we come back, it'll be time for our weekly brain boost with Dr. Dean Sutherland. This is Health Check with Heidi Godman on WSRQ. Stay with us. Take your baby by the 